Good afternoon everyone, how are you doing? I hope you are doing good. The update is up, second part of Atlantic City that I myself will be playing tomorrow on our Saturday livestream, the story part of Atlantic City. And today I will be farming Muffman event on our member hangout later. We'll check news of course on Turtlecast, what Bethesda is saying. And I will try to answer your questions as I'm back from vacation. If you have any questions about my vacation, maybe I will answer them too. We'll see. And now let me say hi to people in the chat. Welcome, Glenn Tarp, Kai Kloman, name it Spiteful Angel, Cookie Crisp, X Lunch, Michael Yost, Purf, Madman Froggy, Alfuel, Atom Ball Baby, Frin. Wolfric, Adefion Jack, RHPS, Radrop, Rick, Jaramillo, TFE Archive, Rupko, Yahir, The Arena Uncensored, for 13 R12 ad, Suika, B. Yoni, Elemental Exposure, Mr. Kill Jr., Mainzer, Rampool, Glatonus Gare, and you, and you, Lap. Chanski, Pete Allen, I'm Peaceful Gamer, J.R. Hart, Mantis, Tabogan, Nicholas, Churia, Travis H, Trusty Kitten, Cam Peterson, SK825FO, Amber Star, and Envoy of Sin. Welcome, everyone. So nice to see you in here. You have a good freq uh, freq frequency? No. Good attendance on this turtle cast. This time around, I see a lot of names in the chat. I'm happy that you are excited to be here. And yeah, let, let me see if there are any news on Bethesda website. There is uh, the Muffman is back article that we'll check. And newcomer's guide to level 20 loaders. I have interested what that is. That was not here previously. So we'll see that. What is the newcomer's guide? And we we'll rate it. I will rate Bethesda guide. Is it good? Is it up to turtle standard? We'll see. I will rate the guide. Uh, but first, as usually, we'll start from your questions on Discord. So let me find those. I'm expecting there are some. Discord questions. Ask the turtle section and there will be questions. Let me find them and then we we'll switch the camera so you can see the questions. Okay, I think those are the new questions. I'll swap the camera. Oh, I need to. Didn't check my stream preview on the phone. I better switch it on. So I'm sure everything is working. I think it's working. Okay. All right. So first question. Hey, Turtle. People seem to have different base weapon strengths. Are the factors that influence this except the obvious by changing the weapon's receiver? The base weapon strength is the same, but you cannot see it. That's the thing about follow. The base weapon stats you cannot see anywhere in game. To see them, you would need to visit a website like a Wikipedia that states the weapon base stats. What you see, it's what you are actually doing with a weapon like the pip boy stats are yours, personal stats, depending on your temporary buffs and so on. So you cannot see the base weapon stats in game. That's why everyone has it different, as you don't see it. You just see your current at the moment stats. So you, there is no way to see a base stats outside of being sure that you remove everything that affects damage from your character and then you check. So, no, you cannot see the base weapon stats in game at all. Next. We can now have 10 camp slots. Yes, the increased amount of camp slots to earn more money from Atom Shop. But no, I, to, to, be, <laughs> to be serious, it's awesome that they 
increase the atom uh, atom shop slots that we can purchase because camp builders love it to have more camps. So that's a good change. That's a really good change. Next, Mighty Turtle. <laughs> I don't think I'm Mighty Turtle, but thank you. How does one make a super AP efficient AK build that still has high damage? Uh, the same way how you do the Rambo Commando build. And to be super AP efficient, you just need legendary effect, 25% less AP cost. And if you want even more AP efficient, put all the low AP cost mods on the weapon. That's how we do it. Hello, Turtle. I saw you hit Scorbis with one crit and one normal hit, with a little dot as well, and killed it. So how good can Cremator be versus Scorby's Queen? I would assume very good, but I do plan to test it mainly on air, as air is generally tougher but more consistent than Scorby's Queen because he's not flying. So I do plan to test this weapon on air. Hopefully I can get bloodied by that time. I still don't have bloodied. Next. I wasn't sold on the Cremator initially without the mods and legendary effects, but after rolling and anti-armor and fully upgrading it, it amazed me when I free-tapped a level 100 Milo Queen. That also made me concerned that they are going to nerf it, as some people say that data miners allege it has similar coding to the legacy damage formula. What are your thoughts about it, and do you think it's going to get nerfed? Could this be a bait and switch? I hope not. Uh, personally, I don't think it will get nerfed, as we still have a new launcher. Previous scoreboard rewards unnerfed. It's just impossible to get it anymore. So if they will figure out this weapon is too good, it is a possibility that it will be impossible to obtain it after the season ends. That's a possibility, I think, as that's what they did with new launcher. You cannot, if you didn't claim Nuka Launcher from the scoreboard in the past, you cannot have it. Jesse. Good day. For your information, for your testing, since the update Faster Fire is working correctly for railways. For my cell phone PlayStation, my Quad Faster Fire railway would only hit register every few shots. So a Quad was better. Now, a Quad Crit was better. Now quad faster fire rate is hitting and filling the crit meter correctly. Oh, interesting. I had a lot of uh, damage registration issues on fast firing weapons, so I'm curious if they fix that. They would need to fix that server side, so maybe, who knows. What are your tasks on the cremator catching a nerf? I hope not, but we'll see. As I already talked about it, yeah, I hope not. Is the civil engineer buff stackable with brake slow on weapons and other perk cards? It seems to be. Missile launcher breaks all the time, so that could be an ideal weapon to run test on a Milo Queen with nuclear health on custom. Yeah, it seems to be working, so... I don't know if we need to test it. It seems to be working. Someone is saying stacks multiplicatively. And that's how every other stack this this type of effect. So that would be correct. Hello. Where can I find the asbestos lining mod for the civil engineer armor? Giuseppe doesn't have it. Giuseppe doesn't have it? He should. Or maybe you already learned it. Or maybe it's supposed to drop from the quest line. You did the quest line? I still need to do my quest line, so I don't know which mod. I know that civil engineer armor pieces and some mod is dropping from the quest line. And if not, the Giuseppe is supposed to have it. Are you guys enjoying the April Fool's event with no enemies? Oh, silly Bethesda, they got us. <laughs> I I don't know. I I missed it. I was on my vacation. But next year, I will see. I hope you did enjoy it. Next, is there a newer railway build video or is the one from two years ago the newest? 
uh, there was no changes to ballistic weapons and stuff how it works so it will be the same do you have any plans for doing a review for the gauss rifle since a lot of things have changed would love to hear your opinions on it i probably will probably will the question is when but i probably will i'm still very excited about testing cremator so in the near future i'm running with cremator Friend, hello turtle will you make a video how much loot there is in atlantic city regions now that we can explore them freely outside expeditions perhaps a separate video for each region i could do it that's a lot of looting i was doing videos like that in the past i could do it yeah why not Friend saying it's me again. Do you know they added a fast travel point to the new location with Myluk Queen, Myluk Den? It's called Myris I now. Oh, I wasn't checking really all the map locations, so I don't. I didn't play too much yet. Um, I kinda miss mutated events already with Equinox lasting three weeks. I hope they will give us mutated week right after it. I hoped we could get like why we cannot get mutated equinox event that would be fun every other week also did you enjoy your vacation this year no staycation this time huh did you bought a souvenir to show everyone in chat i didn't really purchase a souvenir i i have photos <laughs> i make some pictures there i could possibly post some later maybe on x why not Vacation was co really good. I cannot complain. Tenerife is awesome place. Next. Hi. I trust you had a nice holiday and welcome home. Can I ask, do you have all the season rewards yet? And at what level in this new system do you need to reach to be able to claim them all? I have most. You were able to see me buying and unlocking them. I still need to go higher. To unlock everything you probably need to, if you really want everything you need to be over 150 ranks hi turtle a friend of mine ran west tech and got 2435 experience for one super mutant i was of the impression that max per super mutant was 2300 it's equinox event you have access to unique experience boost from the mathman that's stronger than regular mathman experience boost so currently you can get more so it's correct is this something you had noticed i got this amount of xp after this last update have a nice day that's again a mathman buff the special equinox mathman gives 15 percent experience bonus in, if you interact with it for one hour Next. Hi, Mr. T. Hope you had a great holiday. What are your current thoughts on the civil engineer armor? Thinking if using vampire cremator, I have paired with holy fire for distant and up close enemies and adding ricochet perk for vamp synergy offset loss of ballistic damage resistance. Thanks. I didn't change my mind about engineer armor. I think it's the best tradable armor. I think it's still tradable. I didn't test that, but it was on the PTS. Let me know if I'm wrong. But if it's still tradable, that's the best tradable armor. Still worse overall than Secret Service armor. Unless you would benefit from this slower weapon breakage. And Peaceful Gamer is saying, Hello Mr. Turtle, what is better in terms of tagging mobs? New Launcher from previous season or Cremator? Cremator is better. Unless you want to fire up and do a Rainmaker type build, then Cremator do not do that. Doesn't work for this use case, but anything else, Quad Cremator, the best for tagging. Can you use Cremator in stealth? No. And that will be all questions. So coming back to chat on YouTube. Oh, we have a super chat. Thank you a lot, Cookie Crisp, for five bucks. Appreciate that. And the message is, Mr. Turtle, what is your take on the listed bug for Cremator on Fallout Fandom Wiki? Uh, I don't know what the bug is listed there. So I don't know what my take is, as I don't know what bug I'm sorry you are asking me for. Therefore, I have nothing to say.
Oh, there is something about this bug. Okay. Uh, it says the cremator's fireball deals 100% of the cremator's damage instead of 0%. How do they know it's supposed to be 0%? All other explosive weapons do 100% damage and are boosted by demolition experts, so I do certainly hope it's intentional and not a bug. And that wiki is wrong. Especially that from my experience with Bethesda, quite often I was under impression that something is indeed a bug, and then they came out with a note saying it's not a bug, it's intended. And the other way around is true as well. I was thinking that something like this extra bonus experience from last patch to be intentional, that we are getting more for the teamwork. But it happened to be a bug, and now they said, sorry, that's a bug, you shouldn't have any more experience from teamwork. And I was like, oh, really? So I can be absolutely wrong what's a bug and what's intended, because unless Bethesda clearly specify, there is no way to tell which way is intended and which way is a bug. It's never straightforward. It's never what logic would say. Logic do not apply to Fallout 76 and we know that for a while. Which is quite cool, honestly. It's quite cool that logic do not apply. Uh, I consistently, I'm consistently getting surprised by Bethesda. Oh, it's still tradable, the new armor. Okay, awesome. So it's the best tradable armor. Which is huge, because you can hunt for it in player vendors. Which is not possible with Secret Service. And to go further about Cremator, if they remove explosive damage from it, then it will be quite weak and only good for DOT as impact damage is much lower than explosive damage, so this weapon would be absolutely like probably four to five times weaker instantly if they remove it. Therefore, I hope they will not do it. Imagine losing 80% of your weapon damage. <laughs> that's that's solid hit. That would be a solid hit. Will they ever add a proper trade system? I have my doubts at this point. I do hope so, but I have my doubts. Like, Roblox can have it, and here there is none. Oh, two-shot explosive 50 cal is awesome for tagging. I agree. What? Rhythmus? Each projectile from Cremator stuck for you for filling up crit meter? It's not happening for me. What platform are you on? Yeah, if you have 80 intelligence or higher, you're good. That's about the maximum. It uses too much fuel? No, the Fuel efficiency of Cremator is awesome. At least currently. I hope they will not change it. It's better fuel efficiency than a flamer, than a holy fire. Now, the nerf to the cremator is just people's speculation. It's nothing that Bethesda ever said. So I hope it's not true. And now we are heading to the follow.com. I will be judging and giving my opinions that may be absolutely wrong sometimes. about 
a newcomer's guide to level 20 loadouts. Okay, we'll be we'll be judging it and then I will give it a ranking from uh, ranging from one to five turtles. Uh, let's see. You've lived in a vault your whole life. You know nothing about world outside. You overslept and everybody is gone. Now get out there and rebuild civilization. If rebuilding all of civilization seems like a big ask, don't worry. This introductory guide to follow 76 starter loadouts will set you on the path to success. For more player guides, check out this page. Oh, they have more player guides. Starting at level 20. After creating your character and before leaving the vault, you can jump into the game at level 20 or level 2. Starting out at level 20 with a battle ready dweller allows you to tackle more difficult content sooner. A level 2 character will require some combat training and leveling before getting into the thick of things. Both are great options, but let's look at the loadouts available for battle ready dwellers. Okay, I think I will need to deduct one turtle for not mentioning that it's better to start at level 2 if it's your first time we've followed and go through all the tutorials in game. Commando. This is your combat train hunter or your sniper. With high perception and an automatic rifle, the commando is well equipped to take on even the furthest away of Scorch. This loadout comes with the commando per card, that means your rifles cost 20% more damage, and the ground pounder per card, which gives you the power to reload 30% faster. Don't like to get messy? Pick this loadout and take your enemies out before they even know you are there. Okay, the, the weapons are not suppressed, so... That's not really good to mention that they will not know you are there. They will know very well. And weapons in Fallout do not have crazy high range to start with. Slugger. Now, here's the loadout you want if you don't mind getting messy. With brutal strength and little regard for self-preservation, bash your enemies to bits, up close and personal style. You are a little low on perception, but you are ruthless and never back down from a fight. A two-handed melee weapon like a baseball bat is your weapon of choice, and with the slugger per card it does 20% more damage. This loadout also comes with the martial artist per card, so two-handed melee weapons weigh less and you are faster with them. Okay, let's say fair enough. Gunslinger, will they mention that you shouldn't pick it? The loadout most likely to wear a cowgirl hat. The Gunslinger specializes in and gets a bonus to non-automatic pistols with the pair card of the same name. A high agility loadout, this dweller is quick on the draw. While pistols are slow firing, they pack a nasty punch. Oh, that's a lie. The Gunslinger is good for shooting from the hip with the modern Renegade pair card that you shouldn't really use. And you are also a crack shot with 30% more range and accuracy when aiming down pistol sights. Another card you shouldn't use. We need to deduct another turtle for this uh, gunslinger loadout. Shotgunner. Here's another loadout that, like the slugger, relies on high strength and close range. Instead of hacking your enemies to pieces with a machete or a baseball bat, you are great with a shotgun and can shoot more than clay piggins. It's riskier. To be close to your targets, but with the skid shooter per card, your shotgun has high accuracy and excellent spread, so you can take on multiple enemies at a time. I don't know where this multiple enemies at a time comes from. Uh, you, you really cannot early on. You should take them one by one. Not very helpful description. Now specialist. Perceptive and lucky, this loadout takes advantage of VATS, or Voltec Assisted Targeting System. VATS uses action points to target your enemies. And with the concentrated fire per card, you can get even more specific but targeting limbs. Your dweller's high luck and increased accuracy ensure that you don't miss. Uh, that's 
kind of lacking description. There should be way more about VATS for the beginner, but let's carry on. Switch it up. After level 25, you can change your loadout at punch card machines, strategically place throughout Appalachia, often in abandoned train stations. They're not abandoned, they're, they're robot vendors there. You also get the plan for your own punch card machine at level 25, so build one at your camp for you and your friends to use. Your playstyle is yours, and these loadouts are great jumping off points for building out your unique character. So experiment. Every player starts with two free loadout slots, but you can also purchase more slots in the Atomic Shop. Check out more of our player guides. Okay, so... It doesn't say much. It may give slight idea to new player what those loadouts are. Doesn't say any more than when you are picking them. I would say it say less instead of adding to what you see. It does put a little bit of information. I am giving it two out of five turtles. Do you think it's a fair? <laughs> Do you think it's a fair ranking? Do you think two out of five turtles is fair for this uh, guide article? Let me know. Let me know. Two out of five turtles. I was considering one out of five, but there are some information that make me useful. So, two out of five. Oh, Mr. Kill Jr., thank you a lot for two bucks and the messages. Rose, that guy, turtle. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Kill Jr. Do you agree? What is your... What is... Okay, can I do poll? What you give it? Uh, where was the poll button? Start a poll. Uh, rate the guide. Uh. Bethesda guide to loadouts. Let me do options. Okay, unfortunately, there is only four options that I can do. So you will not be able to give it five turtles. You can only do from one to four turtles for the Bethesda guide. So we need to do five turtles as the maximum. <laughs> Freen wants to give it 1.5, but round it up. Okay, fair enough. So... I see there is someone who decided to give four turtles. Mostly the fight is going on between one and two turtles for the Bethesda guide to loadouts. Yeah, the, the main thing I would like to see in guide of this type is saying something different than what you see in game when you are choosing it. Something to add to it, something to help make a choice. And it wasn't really helpful in my opinion. If I would read this guide, I would choose the gunslinger. That's the problem with this guide. If after reading this guide, knowing nothing about the game, I would choose gunslinger. And by this choice, I will basically shoot my own foot. So not a very good guide. Oh, will Blake, our member with a special message here saying, Hey turtle, we had an earthquake here this morning. What was that you? Did you lose your bird bones? <laughs> Happy Friday, you all. Where was the earthquake? Oh, wow. I, I never experienced any earthquake. I, I don't think those are happening in Europe. I don't remember in my life experiencing any type of earthquake. I hope you are all all right. <laughs> Jules voted free turtles because a guide is better than no guide. Okay, you are very generous, Jules. <laughs> oh, Spiteful Angel, thank you a lot for 20 bucks. And Spiteful Angel is saying, I currently have three blooded cremators, but can't remember the stars. I'm currently at work. LOL. 
question. What is the best Blooded Cremator build? I, I already posted it. The, the one that I posted. I'm voting for my own build. I, I'm voting that build that I posted is the best. <laughs> I have, I have, of course, my interest to vote for my own guide over other people's guides, so I'm voting for myself. The earthquake was in northeast US. Oh, wow. I hope everyone is all right there. All right, now, uh, there's one more article. Uh, let's check it out about the Muffman. Let's see if there is something new in it. It says the Muffman is back and you can see the Muffman. From the shadows and into the light of your peep boy, the Muffman emerges today, April 2nd. I'm late with this article. It's not April 2nd anymore. Each year, five members of the enlightened cult journey to the forest region, town of Point Pleasant, to summon and worship the human-sized math mutation. Math mutation? Why is it called? Okay, never mind. Known as the Math Man, helpwise Charles, the forewarned brother Clarence, the interpreter, and other cultists complete their summoning ceremony at the sacred Muffman Museum. It's time for the Muffman Equinox. It says until April 16, but it's currently up for extension, so we don't know when it finished. Probably three weeks from now. To participate in Muffman Equinox at the top of every hour, join your fellow vault dwellers in Point Pleasant. There, speak with brother Clarence at the Muffman Museum to start the event. Protect the ceremonial pyres and fight off the false prophets and the dim ones. Who would try to stop the ritual? Will you be able to complete the rite and win the wise Muffman's favor? I would say yes. Completing the quest objectives before the timer expires gives you a chance to earn Muffman themed plans like the adorable Fuzz Muffman plushie and Fuzzy Enlightened plushie. So they like plushies too, as they listed those two rewards in particular. You can also, as first rewards, you can also earn plans for Chainsaw, Skeptical, Paint, and the Cultist, Eventide Robes and Hoods. The robes and hoods are cool, actually. This time they make a cool outfit, so I need to give it to them. They, they make cultists look really tempting now to roleplay in Fallout, like this outfit. This is really something with this chase, so to pair it with. Remember to hunt down and eliminate the cultist high priest that appear throughout Appalachia for a chance to even more team three words. Oh yeah, high priest, we need to hunt them too, not only the event. Okay, so that's not too much, honestly, in this article. They didn't really say anything new, but article welcomed nevertheless. It's a cool reminder. Okay, how is the poll going? It's a hard fight between one and two turtles. So someone said 1.5 turtles. It seems that exactly that should be the ranking for the, for the guys that we have over 100 votes now. And it's about equal for one and two turtles, and very little votes for three or four turtles for the guide. Oh, earthquake really rare in US too. Okay, that's good, I'm, I'm guessing. That's good. And someone is saying Europe does have airquakes too, but they under two it. I didn't notice. Okay, I'm not counting earthquakes that I cannot feel. So, <laughs> no, I'm not counting those. Th this do not count. If someone will tell me that have been an earthquake and I'm standing and I cannot feel it, that's not an earthquake. Uh, I only count the ones that earth is actually shaking and I can see everything shaking and feel it. If, if I cannot see and feel it, it doesn't count.
Oh, I definitely like you booked next Friday off to watch the followed show. I cannot wait to. The followed show will be awesome. I can feel that. If it will not be awesome, I will be disappointed. I do plan to comment on every single episode, like upload it separately so I don't mix it and don't give spoilers to people that don't want them. So I will be commenting one episode at a time to express my satisfaction or dissatisfaction if I would not like it. I will watch it for sure and I will see how much I like it or don't like it. I hope I will like it. I want to like it. I'm biased. I, I love Fallout Universe. I want the TV show to be good. And I'm a big fan of TV shows, of good ones. Like, I was always watching Star Trek. I loved Orville. That's like similar to Star Trek, but <laughs> different name, Orville. And I'm not as big fan of the Star Wars, but I did watch. I'm just not like, especially the new Star Wars. I, I don't feel it as much. The old Star Wars was better, in my opinion. The Star Trek, I like it. Even the newer ones, they, they were, they've been worse ones, so I agree. They've been worse Star Trek episodes and shows, but generally I like it. Uh, one movie that I like is The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. That was awesome comedy. It's old now. And from new stuff, I'm a big fan of Silo TV show that only has one season so far. So that, that you know about me before I will be judging Fallout TV show. That's the show I do like. Forty-two, yes, absolutely. Forty-two is the answer. And obviously, there is more TV shows and movies that I did watch and enjoy. Just cannot list them all. <laughs> it would not be easy. And I, I will not list the shows that I didn't enjoy because I don't even remember them by now. If I do not enjoy something. I quickly forget it existed. All right. Did I cover everything that was important? Uh, let me check if there is no new announcement on Bethesda Discord, just in case. Because I didn't check today yet. No, the last one is about the hotfix coming in April 8th to fix the reward drops from Mathman Equinox. So we are up to date now. Therefore, I will be concluding the turtle cast. I will end the poll and it looked like two turtles slight win. So guide is ranked as two turtles. We have 42% on two turtles. But it's so close to one turtle that it's basically like one and a half. One and a half turtle, if that would be an option, I bet it would get 80% votes. <laughs> so it's one and a half turtle for Bethesda Guide. A Defiant Jack is saying, watch all silo, very good. Watching Constellation now, but not as good. Yeah, I'm watching Constellation 2. I did watch the first season. Definitely nothing. I don't think there is any TV show as good as Silo that is recently released. I like another one, but as well, not as good as Silo for all mankind. Alternative space history, but there is too much politics for my taste and it's going a little bit too slow. I like the space part, but yeah, I like a little bit faster pace, less politics, but you know that probably about me. Not a big fan of politics. And thank you everyone for being here. Members, don't forget, we are heading now to play some Fallout together. So I will be ending this live stream and starting member exclusive live stream straight away. And that being said, everyone else, tomorrow, 
we are playing more Saturday afternoon, not evening, a little bit earlier, as later on I do plan to go to a friend for some uh, barbecue. It's supposed to be a good weather here tomorrow. So a little bit earlier, probably like 3 p.m. my time, I will be streaming. I will announce it so you will see when the stream exactly starts, just earlier than usually, for about the same amount of time though. And that being said, thank you for being here, everyone, and see you tomorrow. Let's go out. Bye.